Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, big welcome to those of you who are here and those who are tuning in online. It's so good to have you for this second week of our regathering together as a church. Last week, we had a great time together. Uh, we had a few issues with streaming at the time, um, but we're blaming Telstra for that and trying to get that all sorted. Thanks for being patient with us uh, as we work out these glitches. Um, today, we are continuing this series called Re, because these two little letters, when placed before another word, can be very powerful in our lives. Re is a prefix that means again. As in, to refill, to recharge, to regather as we're doing today. Today, we're gathering again. This morning, we're going to be talking about the word renew. And if you have your Bible with you or you want to follow along in the Version Bible app, I want to share this verse from uh, 2 Corinthians. Paul says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, he says, Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly, we are being renewed day by day. And I believe that there are some of us here today and perhaps some who are watching at home who the Spirit of God is going to do a work of renewal in your hearts if you let Him. You see, God is the God of making things new. And so today we're talking about this little word, renew. I wonder if you've ever noticed how things sometimes they wear out. Everything seems to wear out. Your lawnmower wears out. Your favorite pair of jeans wears out. Your car might wear out. Jeans, uh, you know, we love them. We wear them to death. Um, we, we wear them because they fit just right and uh, they're comfortable. And then suddenly they have a tear in an awkward spot. And so, you know, we can't wear them anymore. They, they, they're worn out. My first car, you know, I, I, I loved it. It was red, so it went fast. It helped me to catch the eye of a certain lady who's uh, now my wife. Uh, I would drive that car everywhere. Uh, I would make up reasons to go for a drive. At that time, I lived in Toowoomba and uh, I'd just say to my friends, hey, let's drive to the Gold Coast. Just as an excuse to drive, I'd jump in the car and we would drive. Um, I drove that car until there was nothing left. I pretty much drove it into the ground. And that is how so many of us treat our spiritual lives. We run it into the ground. We don't take time to refresh, to renew. To, we, we go hard and fast, giving, giving, giving until we're worn out to the point where we're exhausted and overwhelmed. We have driven our spiritual life into the ground and we need to be renewed. So what does the Bible have to say about being renewed? Because when it comes to material things, we can replace them, right? We can, we can replace the genes, we can replace the car, but when it comes to living things, we can't replace them. You can't replace your kids. We may think about it, but we can't, right? We're, we're stuck with our kids forever. And so what do we do about living things, about our relationships? You see, God wants to renew our relationships. God wants to continue to renew your relationship with Him. And so maybe today you walked into church or you're sitting at home and you're not that excited about being here. Perhaps you haven't been excited for worship. You're not spiritually firing on all cylinders. Your prayer life, your Bible reading, it's just hard work. Or maybe you've given up on those things entirely. Maybe it's been a while for you since you felt the presence of the Spirit of God or heard His voice speaking to you. And so today I want to focus on this little verse in Colossians chapter 3, verse 10. It speaks powerfully to this issue and it says this, Put on your new nature and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and to become like Him. You need to know that that is what it means to be a Christian. That you are meant to be like Him. That you will be made like Him. We, we will be remade into the image of Christ. We have, we're given a new identity and a new nature. And so we put on this new nature. And as we do, we are renewed. As we do, we become like Him. Now, the Greek word that's used here for renew is the word anakainos, and it means to give new strength and vigor. It also means to be changed into a new kind of life, to be given new strength and vigor and to be changed into a new kind of life. And what's interesting about renewal is that we see it everywhere in life. In our bodies, as we go to sleep at night, we rest and we rejuvenate. 
we, we awake refreshed, hopefully. We see renewal as day turns into night and then back into day again. And we see it in the seasons as things die off and then uh, burst forth into bloom again. Jesus himself withdrew to be refreshed when he was here on this earth. And our, our God, creator God, uh, uh, creator of the universe, rested on the seventh day. And so renewal is all around us, but it also needs to happen in us. We need to put on, is what Colossians says, put on the new nature. Now, to put on means to clothe yourself. It means to, to, to clothe yourself with this new nature. It's a beautiful picture of being renewed, that we would put on or clothe ourselves with the new nature that we have in Christ Jesus. Now, as of today, Karen and I have been here at Life Church in Maribara serving for 17 years. But before we came here, we spent six months on staff at a church in Indiana. Karen and I and our two little girls, who I think were about three and five years old at the time, we hopped on a plane the 3rd of January 2003. It was a stinking hot day in Brisbane and we flew halfway across the world. Now, one of the transfer flights that we I had to take on the way there, we, we actually had to go out and walk on the tarmac to, to get onto the plane. Now, it might have been a hot day in Brisbane when we left, but it was the middle of winter over there. And, and there, was, uh, there was snow and there was ice all over the place. And we were there in t-shirts and shorts. People thought we were nuts and we kind of were. I mean, we were fine while we were on the plane. We were fine while we were in the airport. They were heated. But when we walked outside, we realized how cold it was, how tired we were by that point, how ill-prepared we were for what was going on. I was starting to wonder what we would do when we got to our final destination. And sometimes that's where we let our spiritual lives get to, where we are tired and worn out and ill-prepared for what it is that God would have for us, for what it is that God is calling us to. Fortunately for us in that situation, when we got to our final stop in Indianapolis, the church that we were going to had sent someone to pick us up, but they'd also sent jackets and snow uh, pants and snow shoes. And so we put them on. We clothed ourselves with just what we needed in that moment, with what had been so lovingly and generously provided for us and given to us. We clothed ourselves in those things to prepare us and comfort us for what was happening around us at that time. And what Paul is saying here is in the same way, we need to put on our new nature. It's something we clothe ourselves with as Christians. We need to do this every day where we say to God, I am a new creation. Uh, you have bought me with a price. I now belong to you. And so God, help me today. I'm surrendering my life to you. Will you guide me and strengthen me and direct me? Help me as I put on this new nature of Christ. As I live for you, I want to be like you. And it's almost like with a firefighter or, or a nurse or a police officer, when they put on their uniform, the, this confidence comes, right? Uh, this security, this inner strength from wearing the uniform and knowing who they are. And that's what happens when we step into who we are in Christ Jesus. This confidence comes, this faith lifts there's boldness as we step into who we are in Christ Jesus. You see, the putting on is our part. The renewing is God's part. The, the putting on is rendered here in this passage, and I did a little bit of a Greek st word study here, but the putting on is rendered here in what is called the middle voice, which means both it's both the cause of um, and the recipient of the action. I put it on me. So I'm the cause of and the recipient of that action. It's a little bit like if I scratched myself, I did the scratching, but I was, so I was the one who was scratched. But the renewal is God's part. And it is rendered here in the passive tense, which means it's done to us. We are the recipients of that. We are passive in the process. God is active. He's doing the renewing. And we are the recipients of that. Hence, it's written here, rendered here in the passive tense. God renews us as we press into Him and as we clothe ourselves in His character and in His nature. And so how does this happen? What, what does renewal look like? What, what will God renew in you? And if you're taking notes, if you're following along in the YouVersion Bible app, 
the first thing is that God will renew your spirit. He will renew your spirit. Now, King David was uh, one of the greatest men in the Bible, a man after God's own heart, the Bible says. He was in a time of his life where he was just exhausted. He, he was run down. He was worn out. He'd had some terrible things happen uh, around him. He had done some terrible things. And he cries out in Psalm 51 and he says these words. He says, Create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Renew a steadfast spirit within me. Now, the word steadfast means to be firmly established, to be stable and secure. And when you put on uh, your, your new nature in Christ, when you clothe yourself in Christ, He will make your faith firm. He will make your walk stable. He will make your future secure. And if you know the story of David, of this great leader, King David, you'll know that when he cried out in this prayer, he was a broken man. He had done some terrible things, adultery, murder. He was at his, one of the lowest points in his life. And so he cries out to God, God, would you help me? Would you change me? Would you create in me a clean heart, a pure heart, O oh God? And what we see is that God did that. God did a renewal in David's life. In the middle of that point of brokenness, he renewed him. And maybe today there are some of you who are going through some brokenness, some pain, some hurt. And all that you see at this point is hopelessness. And what you need to know is that what God did in David, he can do in you today. He can renew you. God wants to renew your heart. He wants to take you from that state of brokenness and make something new and beautiful out of that. God did it with David. He can do it with you. But I want to show you now just six verses later. So from Psalm 51, where David cries out to God, do that work of renewal in me, make my uh, heart steadfast, my spirit steadfast. Six verses later in Psalm uh, 57, David's crying out again. But this time he says, my heart, O God, is steadfast. My heart, and he repeats it, my heart is steadfast. I will sing and make music. And some of you today, you need to know that you too can be steadfast. That God can renew that steadfast spirit in you so that you will be firmly grounded, stable and secure. God wants to do something special in your life. He wants to renew you. He wants to refresh you. He wants to make something beautiful come alive in you. But so often, so often when we need this renewal from God, so often our prayers are based around our circumstances. Our prayers are, God, would you change the things around me? God, will you fix the things around me? And then everything will be okay. You know what I mean, right? We pray those kinds of prayer. Uh, God, would you change my boss? Would you fix him? Then my workplace will be so much better. God, if you change my spouse, uh, you know, my, my home life would be so much nicer. Don't anybody say amen to that because your spouse might hear you say that. But God, we, we pray, God, would you change my kids? And then, you know, my family would be better. If I could just, God, if I could just have enough money to pay the bills, then everything will be better. We want God to change the things around us. But you need to know that God wants to change what's in us. Renewal starts internally. And King David cries out. He cries out to God and he says, God, renew my heart. Would you change me? He's, he's asking. And God, our prayers need to be, God, would you change me? Renewal starts on the inside where we say, God, change my heart and make me like you. Give me your patience. Give me your love. Give me your grace. God, change me from the inside out. That's where renewal starts. From that state of brokenness where we call on God and say, help me to be like you. God, would you renew your spirit in me? God will renew your spirit and secondly, God will renew your strength. Now, when I think of going on a holiday, uh, which, which I'd like to do uh, in, the, in the near future, when I think about going on a holiday or getting refreshed, I usually like to travel. But sometimes those travel holidays, if you're anything like me, they just go, 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 go. And I come back more worn out, more stressed out than when I left. I mean, you come back and there's bills to pay and there's hundreds, if not thousands, sometimes emails to catch up on. And I haven't taken the time to relax and refresh and renew. 
And so how do we renew? How is it that God can renew our strength? How do we refresh? How is our vitality returned to us when the world around us just seems to suck it from us? Well, in Isaiah chapter 40, a very well-known passage, verse 31, it says, Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. What does it mean to hope in the Lord? Well, it means to wait on Him. It means to look to Him. It means to look for His hand his activity. If our hope is in him, then it means our hope is not in ourselves. It's not in my goodness to earn his favor. It's not in my strength to get the job done. Our hope is in him. And I want to challenge you this week, just like I did last week, to take just 10 minutes a day to just sit with God, to just be in his presence no agenda. If a conversation just starts to to flow, then that's great. But just sit and listen and soak up his presence. Sit and wait on him. Sit and put your hope in him. Depend on him and let him renew your strength. I want you to know that I don't always feel very strong. In fact, I probably feel weak and out of my depth more often than I do feel strong. And I want to encourage you, if you ever feel like that, if you ever feel weak and worn out, God wants to renew your strength and He wants to refresh you and make you new so that you'll be able to run and not grow weary, so that you can walk and not faint. And so wait on the Lord, put your hope in Him and allow Him to renew your strength. And it's not just physical strength, God can renew your spiritual strength so that you can rise up above the winds of resistance that come your way as you put on and clothe yourself with who you are in Christ. Maybe you're here today or you're watching on uh, our live stream, but you've been too busy. You've been wearing yourself out doing, you know, completing that list of things that we talked about last week, the list of things that we think might make God love us more. And in the busyness, you've lost your way. You've worn yourself out. You've driven your spiritual life into the ground. Perhaps today God is saying, come back. Come back to me today. God is saying, I want to renew you. Perhaps God is saying, I want to refresh you. Maybe he's saying, I want to bless you. I want to give you more than you've ever hoped for or dreamt of. But if you're out there doing your own thing, disconnected from me, how can I pour into your life? In Matthew chapter 11, verse 13, it says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. Uh, Let me say that again. And in fact, we hear this as if it's God speaking to you today. These are God's words to you. Come to me. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I will ease and relieve and refresh your souls. God is here and and you are here in this place at this moment for a reason. God is calling and it's time that we say yes to God. Yes, I'm going to come to you. I'm coming home. I want to reconnect. I want to be renewed, refreshed, remade into your image. And so let us pray together. Let me pray for you. God, would you come and do your your heart work in us to renew us to lift our strength, to make us more like you. God, as we seek to put on who we are in Christ Jesus, would you make us like you?